Welcome to Fit Mama Health Talk with Angela Campbell, where I love to share real life lessons to help encourage you and to also teach you to honor and take care of your entire body, your mind, and also your spirit so that you as a busy woman, busy mom can show up the healthier and happier version of you for all of those you love, as well as keeping up with chasing your dream. Welcome to your new lifestyle. Hi, I'm Angela Campbell, and I am super excited to bring this training to you here for this amazing, amazing summit for women empowerment. Such a topic that is so close and near and dear to my heart. Um, and I can't wait in today's training that I wanted to bring here. I felt super called with everything that I do and in alignment with what this summit is all about as truly helping women uh, and helping you make sure your health is a priority so that it can actually help you positively impact and have more success in your business. Your health is something that should be looked at more in today's world um, that go to in order to be successful in your business not the opposite. I see so many and I fell victim to this as well, which I'm going to share in a second. Um, but I felt, I felt victim to losing myself in the rat race of chasing success. Right. So again, you know, I feel called to first share a little bit about my story so you can, uh, maybe paint a picture in your mind maybe resonate a little bit with you on, on maybe the journey that you're currently in right now. Um, again, my name is Angela Campbell. Um, I am from Texas. I live just outside of Fort Worth, Texas, in a small country town. Um, and I have uh, an amazing husband that's my biggest supporter. Um, I have two kids, a little girl who's six, a little boy who's three. And for me personally, I'm a health coach. Um, but I've always I, you know, I went through phases of my journey, literally trying to find myself. Fitness and health was always something I was super passionate about. I was, um, you know, always active growing up as a kid. But then I, uh, I went into studying physical goal therapy and didn't see feel aligned with it. And then I ended up going into personal training. I was a personal trainer in the box gyms for years. Um, uh, got burnt out. Have you ever heard the word burnout or felt burnout? Um, I was super burnt out as a personal trainer. I loved what I did, but I was like, oh, there's gotta be more that led me to, um, a corporate world job. I actually left personal training to go to corporate world. That's where I was the most unhappy. Um, and, but that's also where I found an online business and network marketing. Okay. So if you're a network marketer, you're probably going to relate to this as well too. Um, I was introduced to it. And, but along the lines behind the scenes, I was super unhappy. My husband and I were struggling getting pregnant with our first baby. Um, poof, network marketing came into my life in 2014. And poof, the next month we finally became pregnant with our first baby. And it was the best news in the world. Um, but it also drove me to, oh my gosh, I do not want to ever come back to this corporate world job when this baby gets here. So I poured my heart and soul into network marketing, chasing all the top ranks, all the success, hustle and bustle, hardcore, everything, and was able to accomplish so much. Um, I was able to hit top ranks. I was able to replace my income and then some. We were, my husband and I were traveling all over the world, doing all the things that network marketing allowed me to. Um, insert baby, January, 2015, we had my little girl. Um, I was able to actually say bye to the corporate world job. Um, at that point and truly work from home since the day she was born. Continue the hardcore hustle. Now I got a baby in my hands, right? Um, I still felt something was missing. So I also went back into fitness and teaching group fitness classes. So I was doing those two things while being a mommy. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. I'm still doing the hustle and bustle, the hardcore everything. And then insert baby number two um, in March of 2018. Um, and that's where my world just totally changed. I now had a second baby. I had a lot more to juggle. I was still growing my network, network marketing business online. I had actually switched companies uh, while I was pregnant with my second son, not feeling aligned with the first one, feeling aligned with the one that I'm actually still a part of today, uh, which I love. And I will tell you, um, my whole world changed because at that point, my, my son, my second baby didn't sleep very well. I was living on fumes. I wasn't eating right. I wasn't fueling my body with a good sleep, doing all these things. Although I was still top ranks for a while, 
it slowly started to crumble and fall apart. We had made changes, we had moved homes, got our dream home and did all this stuff, but things started to fall apart and it all started with me putting myself on the back burner. I put myself on the back burner for years. I was getting up at 3.45 in the morning. I was I would, to go teach group fitness classes, come home, and then I'd put my mommy hat on with my tiny baby that was under one. And then my other, uh, my sweet little girl that was three at the time. And I pretended that everything was okay. We got to a point where our businesses, both of mine, the group fitness and the online network marketing, both started to crumble. We It led us to a place of paying mortgage on a credit card two months in a row. And the core problem was I couldn't keep any bit anymore. I burned my candle at both ends long enough and it was not working. The day that forever changed my life was September, 2019. My son was 18 months old. He was 18 months old. I was living on fumes still, walking around in mom fog, mom brain, didn't have energy to keep up with anything. Couldn't mentally focus on my business no matter how hard I tried, um, you know, was just really showing up for the fitness classes, but wasn't really truly present there anymore. And it was two o'clock in the afternoon. I was living on coffee and fumes, you guys. And if you can relate to this, the day that forever changed my life was that day in September, in two, September 2019. My son was 18 months old. He's my rambunctious, super active. He was also a climber. He climbed up when I was making coffee, pulled the cure, my coffee cup off the Keurig, poured it down his chest, insert me freaking out, him screaming bloody murder. It was the worst day of my life as a mom, but it was also the biggest lesson of my life to wake up because I needed to put myself a priority. Months went by. We had to rush into the ER. Obviously, I had secondary burns all his chest. You can still see the scars today, and he'll be four coming up in March. The big lesson that day was this. I can't keep up if I don't make myself a priority. If I do not take care of myself, my businesses are continue to fail. My family's only going to get a fraction of me because that's all I have left. I don't have anything left for anybody else. The biggest thing that came out of that entire part of my journey was my health coaching business that I do now. God sent me a message that day to one, wake up and take care of me. Two, you've got a message and a story now. It's your turn to share. We are truly put through things in our lives to help us have a message, to help us spread the word, to help us change lives. And sometimes that may be you sharing your super messy, messy part of your journey. And that's what we do. And my health coaching business I actually launched it two years ago. I felt called to do more. I left the group fitness. I still do the network marketing, but not near as active in it because my health coaching takes my passion. Now we thrive and strive to make sure that other women like me aren't putting their health on a back burner to chase success in business. Because when you do, it's not if, because I see it every single day. It's not if, it's when your, your, your tower is going to start falling apart because your foundation is sand and it's about to get washed away. It's like building a home on sand. You can build a home on sand, but if there's no foundation, concrete, cement, that's going to keep that whole house together and the waves keep coming in and washing, washing it away, washing it away, washing it away. Your house is going to come crumbling down. And that is you and your body and your health. I don't mean what the scale says. I don't mean what size of pants you're in. I don't mean only what you physically look like on the outside. I'm a big believer is you have to pay attention to your health. If you are chasing success in business, you cannot get near as far as you want to if your self and your health is not a priority. It should be part of your daily routine. There's a reason the most successful people, the most successful people and mentors that you may be following, a lot of these people in here, a lot of the mentors that I have, 
There's a reason they all tell you a part of your daily habit, a part of your business habit should be some sort of personal development. It should be some sort of movement as well. And it should be fueling your body with the right kinds of food so that you can physically have the right amount of energy to keep up the right amount of energy, mental focus, mental clarity to get things done efficiently and be present still with your family. Because when you are when you're walking around in mom fog, I always got mom brain. Maybe you're not a mom, you know, just mental fog, no mental clarity whatsoever. You have to, you have to grasp. There's a better way to live. We were not put on this planet to walk around exhausted, tired, frustrated, mad, upset. When you're living that way, also, when you're trying to grow a business, Watch how you react to some of the smallest, simplest things. Maybe it's the way someone commented on your post, or maybe it's the way a team member didn't show you that they appreciated you and you're the leader of the team or whatever. When you're in a much healthier place, you can think more clearly, and then you can also handle moments of stress and moments of uh, you know negativity a little bit better than you would when you're tired, exhausted, and you're, you're about ready to snap just like that. Right? So I really, the biggest passion and purpose that I feel like I wanted to get across in, in this presentation to you is this. If you're chasing success, you will have more success if your health is a priority. It has more positive impacts on your business than you can ever imagine. And you will never know it unless you do it, unless you try, right? So here's a few tips and things that I wanted to share with you today. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a mom on a personal, uh, or excuse me, a personal trainer. Yes. But a health coach, right? I love business. I thrive in it. I love helping other people in business as well too, right? Not just their health, but that's the way I do it. You want to have more success? What are you doing to take care of you first? Are you an all-in personality type of person? I'm going to share some tips with you. Like, how in the world, Angela? I'm so busy already. I don't have any enough time in my, I don't have enough time in my day to take care of the kids and 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 grow my business and get all the my get get to uh, all the messages that are in my inbox and make sure all my customers are taken care of, my clients are taken care of, all these things. It's about efficiency and it's about taking care of you so that you can do more in less time because you're not super. Oh, I can't even focus because I'm so exhausted. I haven't filled my body. So number one thing, the first tip that I wanted to share with you today is all about baby steps. You have to take this in baby steps and strides. You cannot, 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 cannot. You can't do all or nothing. If you have an all or nothing personality, which is most of the women that I work with, most of the women that I talk to, this is me as well. I'm really bad. Listen to me here. If you're really bad at taking on too many things at one time, I want you to listen up. That's a recipe for disaster. And it same thing with your health. You cannot go from not working out at all to doing, you know, all the things and all juggling all the hats that you already do. And then on juggling all the hats that you already do, you try to throw in a five to seven day workout routine and a super strict meal, um, you know, diet that cuts out certain food groups and, and does everything right away, super fast, ripping everything away from your life. That does nothing but overwhelm you and you last a week or maybe two. So one of my biggest and first tips that I have to share with you, if you're struggling right now, you're chasing a business, you're trying to earn the success, you're trying to do all the things and you don't have your health right now as a priority, I want you to listen baby steps. You have to take baby steps. One thing at a time. Start with 10 minutes. One of my favorite things that I always share uh, in some of the other things that, that I do is 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, drive 10 minutes in your head. What does that mean, Angela? I mean, if you're not working out at all, then start with implementing 10 minutes a day where you go for a walk. If you're not doing any personal development at all, because I'm a big fan, personal development should be in your business routine. Personal development should be in your health and fitness routine. I mean, feeding your mind right here because it's going to be hard. A health journey to lose weight or just simply, simply start to feel better, it's hard. It's not easy. But neither is a journey of an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, you're going to have great weeks that just so much fun because you're signing so many people up and having so much success. And then you're going to have a week 
weeks in a row where you're like, I'm not sending anything up. What's wrong? I suck. I doubt myself. I do all these things. Okay. To me, a health journey also has mental health as a really big focus. And that's to me where personal development comes in. So when I say 10 minutes, it can be multiple things. 10 minutes of a walk every day, there, there can be your fitness routine. Yeah. It may not feel, it may not sound like a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. And if you can't get a full 30 minute workout in right now in the season of life that you're in, you need to start with 10 minutes. 10 minutes is it. Go for a walk outside, soak up some vitamin D if you can. If not, pace around your house or your office. I'm in my office right now and I will tell you, um, I have strategic breaks put on my calendar every hour that are 15 minutes long. And I don't, I'm not doing something super extravagant or special. I'm just getting up from my chair, walking around, pacing my house, or if I can go outside, I go outside. I try to go outside at least one of those breaks. If anything, pace, move, don't sit at your chair for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours because when you do that at the end of the day, you have zero energy left. Like you are mentally so drained. It's going to be hard to do anything else, including just showing up for your family when your kids get home from school or your husband come home for work or whatever your situation looks like. Mental health is a huge part of what I want to talk about today. Not just physical health, losing weight, that sort of health. I mean, mental health. Back to 10 minutes. 10 minute walk, 10 minute personal development of some kind. Okay. Maybe that's meditation. Maybe that's a personal development video that you find on YouTube. There's so many YouTube. I'm a YouTube junkie. There's a lot of motivational speakers on there that I love. Some of them are screaming in my ear, Eric Thomas or Billy Osbert kind of screaming, or some are Joel Olstein talking, you know, preaching to me about some faith. You have to figure out what feeds your soul though, because everybody's different. Right. Or, and, you know, going back to, you know, I want to also tie in nutrition a little bit about baby steps. We, I love to focus on habits with women, not, Hey, here's this crazy meal plan. Let's rip every carb out of your meal. So you can see a result on your scale. No, I am also a big fan when it comes to nutrition. You don't take everything away all at once. You don't rip out. You don't go from, you know, eating whatever you want and not being mindful uh, to let me go keto and cut out every single carb and, you know, do all these things. That is also a recipe for disaster taking on or taking on or taking out too much too fast. Because again, what's that going to do? It's going to shoot your body into crazy shock. It's going to shoot your body into cravings. You're going to be craving like insane crazy to the point where you're irritable and you're hangry and you're moody and you're tired and you're exhausted and you're irritable and nobody wants to be around you. Not to mention it sucks and it's hard and you last a week, maybe two. So when it comes to food, focus on habits. We start our, a lot of our women on pledges. What do I mean by that? Like, let's pledge to do something different. Do you eat breakfast? No? Okay, great. There's your pledge. All we're going to start with right now is give yourself permission to eat a healthy breakfast that includes some protein and carbs every single morning. Start there. Get into that routine. It's a habit. You got to form a habit with it first. Once you get into that routine, okay, let's add something else. Let's now focus on making sure we're drinking enough water every day. Another habit, do you know water is one of the first habits that you should start incorporate? Like start now. If you're someone right now that you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, I don't drink enough water. I want you to start right now. Half your body weight in ounces, make it a habit, make it a goal, do it on a daily basis. And watch how much better you feel just by that one simple thing. So many of us are walking around not hydrating our bodies. Your digestive system need water. Your joints need water. Your body holds water when you don't drink enough water. So if the scale is going up, guess what? It could be, it's very likely to be temporary depending on the person, okay? It fluctuates every day. We're human. We're in, we're also women. We retain water like that. We can look at something and retain water. We got hormones. We can retain water. We're going to go up a few pounds. It's water that can flush out. I promise you guys, it's temporary. It is not forever. You don't gain fat overnight, just like you can't lose it overnight. So give yourself grace. You have to start with baby steps. It can't be overnight. The number one problem for a lot of women's unhealthiness in today's world is all the fad diets. It's all the quick fixes. I love to help you, again, learn about habits what habit are we fucking us on this week, Angela? How about we just get protein in every single one of our meals? 15 to 25 grams of protein in each one of your meals. One of the most important macronutrients that you should have in your body. 
next to carbs. Carbs are your friend, ladies. They're not the devil. Carbs are your body's preferred source of fuel. If you're right now, you're listening, you're like, oh my gosh, Angela, you're so, you're so on point here. I love carbs, but I cut them totally out because I wanted to lose some weight. Guess what? Add them back in, but baby step adding them back in. Don't go from 50 carbs to 300 carbs in one day. You're, you are going to gain weight. You're going to feel crazy. Okay. Baby step your body. Don't shock it. So baby step everything. Okay. The second thing that I want you to do, I really want to encourage you here. A second tip, so to speak, second lesson that I wanted to bring to you today is really just how you look at your health and fitness routine. How are you looking at your nutrition and fitness routine? This is a big, 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 big thing among a lot of the ladies in today's world, today's world all over. We're looking at fitness, our workouts. Oh my gosh, I got to work out because I'm trying to lose weight. That doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> if you're only looking at your workouts for, oh my goodness, I have to go work out today because I'm trying to lose weight, then you're not going to stick to it. It's not going to become a lifestyle change to you at all. I highly encourage you starting with making a shift and you have to say it out loud. You know, there's power behind what you say out loud. You speak it into existence. It's going to happen. If I start looking at my workouts, okay, I'm not going to say anymore. I'm too tired to work out. Because my workouts give me energy, right? So when you're talking about your fitness, you're talking about it to other people, or maybe it's just you in your own mind, in your own head. You have to make a mindset shift to look at your fitness and your nutrition in a different way, okay? So in order to make it happen, my fitness, my workouts, my workouts are my stress relief. My workouts are to help create energy. If I'm so tired all the time, there's more reason you need to work out. You need to move your body. You don't have to go beast mode, hardcore, crazy ladies. It can be a walk. Some women respond better to just walks, depending on your stress levels, depending on your hormones, depending on your current metabolism, depending on all these things. It doesn't have to be hardcore crazy. But if you're walking around tired all the time, you need to start moving your body more. Why? Because that's how you're going to generate energy. Not by sitting down on the couch and watching Netflix because I'm so tired, I can't do anything else. It's not gonna be easy, but move your body. And so when you start to look at your fitness more as like, okay, this fitness, okay, this is gonna help me create the energy that I need to actually show up in my live videos that I need to do for my business, or this is gonna help me create the energy that I need to take my kids through their homework when they get home from school to be in my inbox all day responding to messages because I've got this massive promo going on and I have hundreds of messages coming in. Can't keep up if you have no energy, right? So look at your fitness, not for weight loss, not for how you look out, look on the outside, but look at it for that's the energy and the stress relief and the mindset habit that I need. I need to move my body. There's proof behind the endorphins and everything that is released when you're actually working out, it will help you in your mindset as well too. So if you're struggling with your mindset, go work out. You always feel better when you do. You just need to remind yourself of that. Same thing with food, ladies. Food is our friend. Food is something that we need. And again, one of the biggest things that I see as I talk to women on a daily basis about their health, the one of the biggest mistakes that I see is too many of them have followed all the fad diets or even intermittent fasting. You guys, I'm not knocking it. I actually like it. I actually do it occasionally. I use it as a tool. I don't use it as a daily practice and I don't coach it as a daily practice because a lot of women go to fasting because it's easy. I don't want to eat breakfast anyway. So let me just skip it. And it's that I'm not knocking anybody that does it, but here's the lesson that I want you to hear me out on. It creates more habits of starving yourself and eating like less than thousands of less than a thousand calories a day. What that leads to is your, it's a stress on your body. It jacks up your hormones. It slows down your metabolism. And if you're not doing it a manifesto right, which is a lot of people, then you're doing more damage than you are good. Okay, so food is your fuel. And that's how I want you to look at it. So again, the mindset shift here is don't, don't think badly of food because, oh, I can't eat that. That's going to make me gain weight. Oh my gosh. No, look at your food as your fuel. Look at your food as your instructions. I always like to say this. Your food, what you put in your mouth or what you don't because you're starving yourself, that is the instructions you're giving your body on how you need to feel and function every single day. So if you're starving yourself and not eating at all, you're giving your body instructions to feel horrible, have no energy, have no way to mental, mentally focus because you have no fuel in your body that even goes up to your brain and be able to perform. 
or even worse, if you're eating a bunch of dry food, a bunch of processed foods, a bunch of high sugar, a bunch of all the wrong things, you're, you're creating a ton of inflammation in your body, which throws off all kinds of things. Your energy levels suck. Let me, let me paint a picture for you on this. It's like Thanksgiving day. For example, if you you're giving on Thanksgiving day, we typically all overeat. We eat way too much sugar from all the desserts and all the things you end up going into the sugar coma and want to sit on the couch and not do anything and take a nap. Imagine what you put in your mouth every single day. Imagine the instructions that you're giving your body. If that's how you eat on a regular basis. No wonder you don't feel good. No wonder you have no energy. No wonder you can't keep up. No wonder you might be a little bit moody. In your family or some people may not want to be around you near as much. It hurts, but it's, it's truth, right? All of these things affect your business. If you're not fueling your body with enough food to have the energy or the mental capacity to keep up, you're only performing at a fraction of what you could perform in your business and truly have that mental focus, have that energy. When you feel good and you feel healthy and you're taking care of your body and your vessel here, you can perform so much better in your business. And guess what? You can get so much more done in less time than sitting at the computer and staring into outer space because you're so tired and you have no fuel in your body and you haven't moved it. So you can't even think. And three hours goes by and you're stuck in Scrollville or you haven't got anything done. A lot of people will run to caffeine. Don't run to caffeine. I'm not saying you can't have caffeine. I love caffeine. I'm a coffee girl. Gotta have it. I'll take an energy drink once in a while if I need it, but it's rare. Look at your food, look at how much water you're drinking and look at how much you're moving your body. And if you're not doing any of those well, that's where you would start. And I promise you're going to feel so much better in your business. Your business is going to, you're, you're just going to soar when you start to put you first. I had the most success over these past two years out, out of the whole eight years of being an entrepreneur. The last two years have been the most successful. And I also turned 40 this past June and got and literally reached a personal goal that I had was to get in the best shape of my life by the time I hit 40 and I reached it and I've had the most success. There's a reason why those two happened simultaneously. They are connected. The better health you are in, the better your business is going to soar. Your relationships are going to soar in your life. And when we feel good in our relationships as a wife or the mom, as a leader and all these things, your business actually does so much better too. Believe it or not, that was a major lesson that I learned. I learned, I used to think it was the opposite. The more success I have in my business, the more my family's gonna love me, the more I'm gonna be able to buy my family things, the more I'm gonna be able to do this. No, the more I am present and make sure that myself and my family's a priority and I spend all my time with them as well when I can, when I need it. And then- Oh, my business actually does so much better because I feel good about myself in those other areas. They are connected and you know, I'm right. And I'm hoping you're feeling this today. So again, oftentimes I encourage you this. If you get anything out of this video today, start with 10 minutes today. If you're not doing anything, you can always, always, always reach out. I'm happy to share suggestions. But look at your fitness now in a different way. Look at your workouts. Look at your walks that you do daily, not to try to lose weight, not to change your outward appearance, but how you are internally functioning and feeling, which will allow you to have more success in your business and your relationships with your family and the people that you love and you spend the most time with and you really want to pour into them, but you can't because you're so tired right now. You want success in business. You have to be a priority or you will lead yourself down a road to burn out like I did. I was almost on the verge of quitting fitness altogether because I was so burnt out. I was so burnt out. I was not taking care of myself at all. I wasn't doing anything right. I wasn't doing anything right. I wasn't feeling my body enough. If you just heard the alarm that was going off behind my computer, I paused for a second to go turn it off, but I find it very important for me to share with you what that was, because this is something else you can do to help you with your health. We're human. 
And sometimes we just need reminders. If you heard that little alarm going off, I, everything happens for a reason. It's so divine. It happened because this was another lesson that I forgot to put on my notes to share with you today is this. That reminder was a reminder for me to stop, check my mindset, and to breathe. And I have those periodically five times going off throughout the day. Why? Because I need that reminder to be like, oh, Oh, I need to breathe. Make sure I'm not doing too much. Make sure that I'm not just go, 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 rush, 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 rush. Because I know that that leads me down to an exhaustion, leads me to not feeling good, leads me to not being very productive in anything. And it leads me to feeling guilty and bad about how I'm showing up for my family. So set reminders on your phone. If you're someone who struggles with eating, eating enough is the biggest problem in today's world among women that we that I talk to on a daily basis, more than eating crap or eating bad food. It's simply the fact that our society has led us to, oh my gosh, less is more. I need to eat less so that I can weigh less. No, I can't tell you how many times the biggest thing that I start working with women on is, okay, girl, we got to eat some more food. Your metabolism has slowed down to a crawl because you've starved yourself for so long. Now we got to refuel it and we got to speed it back up. And the only way to speed it back up is to give it fuel. Your body is a massively, it's, it's amazing machine that needs to be powered with movement through your body with that personal development to fuel up here. Okay. But with fuel, your food, what you're putting in your mouth. You need a good adequate amount of protein. You need a good amount of carbs, not too much, but not too low either. There's that fine, happy medium and everybody's number is different. And then some good healthy fats. Finding the balance between the three and what your body responds to, but slowly making sure that you're eating enough because eating enough is what's going to help you speed up your metabolism. Eating enough is going to help you make sure that you have the energy to keep up with your demands of your business, the demands of your family and demands of everything else. Because most women that is watching this right now, you wear many, many hats, not just one. You're not just a business owner. You're not just trying to grow a business. You're doing 20,000 other things behind the scenes as well. That is what we do as women. But it's, it's so hard for so many women in today's world to put themselves first. I want you to think about something. Selfish. Be selfish. Be selfish in a way that puts you first. We, I, I love this thing so much that we actually had a t-shirt created. Selfish means taking care of you first so you can take care of everybody else. You have to take care of you first so you can better serve your customers in your business. Take care of you first so you can actually show up and grow your business and hopefully find new customers and clients. Taking care of you first helps you lead your team. If you don't have a team yet, you might in the future. If you take care of yourself, you can have more success where you end up hiring like a VA, hiring a team of maybe coaches. Um, I have coaches that work for me now that help me actually do the coaching with the women and the programs that we run. Having more success will lead you to a place where you can hire someone to come clean your house or do these things, right? But you have to come first. Putting you first helps you show up better for your spouse or your partner in life or partner in business. If you're not happy with yourself and, take care and taking care of yourself, real talk, how can you really take care of anybody else? That was the wake-up call I had when my son got birth. I wasn't taking care of myself at all. I was trying to take care of everybody else, but they were all getting a super small fraction of me because I had not much left to give. So if you get anything from today, you have to come first. It is not a choice. It is a, it, it is a choice. It, at the end of the day, it is a choice. It's a choice that you have to make and then communicate it and then put yourself on the calendar. Because here's the thing too. We all have to-do lists that we run in our business, right? Like for me, perfectly, for example, I have to-do lists that are already like typed out and ready. I print a new one every single week. I've got my Mondays, my Tuesdays, my Wednesdays to keep me organized. I add things to the list. I do all this stuff. But guess what is on that list for me? At the very, very top, there's three things. And there's a checkbox. There's workout, there's prayer, and what is the other one? Meditation. Workout, prayer meditation. 
because those are the three most important things that I know for me, how I need to start my day and the rest of the day goes so much better when I do. Except for the weekends. Sunday, I don't do any of that. I do prayer and stuff throughout the day. I don't work out though. And I do meditation, but it's just different on that day because I give myself one, sometimes two days to do nothing, to not wake up to an alarm. You should too. You deserve rest. Rest is also a part of a health and fitness. A health journey also includes rest. It's not just working out. It's not just eating certain foods. You also have to include rest, ladies. If you're not sleeping enough, that's another part of a health journey, something we dive into as well in our programs. You have to be a, you have to get good adequate amounts of sleep. Between six and eight hours, there's science and studies behind it. It's highly recommended. How in the world can I do that, Angela? I've got two kids. I got to get them to bed. I got to get up. I got to do all these things. And now you want me to wake up before everybody else? Priorities and boundaries. How are you going to bed? Are you laying in bed scrolling social media? A bad habit we help a lot of women break because that alone will keep you up for hour, two hours later. Next thing you know, it's 11 o'clock. I got to get up at five. You're not getting enough sleep. Boundaries with your phone, boundaries with your kids. Part of my problem too, when I was in the worst of my point of my journey was that I didn't have boundaries at all about bedtime. I worked from home. My kids weren't in school yet. I just let them go to bed when they're ready to go to bed. What I didn't realize is how bad that was damaging me because then it was 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. I was going to sleep. I was getting up at 345. That's not healthy. I'm not superwoman and neither are you as much as we try. You can be superwoman if you choose to and if you take care of you and you can do anything in the world. It's the sky is truly the limit in your business. But if you really want to have that big impact and that big amounts of success in whatever business it is that you're trying to run, you truly have to come first. Your health has to come first or you're not going to be able to keep up. So I hope if anything, this got some value to you today. And I hope you at minimum, if you're not doing anything at all, find one thing that you can start to change now, just one tiny little habit. Start with 10 minutes a day. If you're not doing anything at all, start there, master that for a few weeks before you even add anything else and start to see how good you feel. So you can follow me, um, how you can, you know, reach out. Uh, I'm on Instagram at the underscore fit underscore mompreneur, or just search Angela Campbell. You should be able to find it that way too. Um, or you can also find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Angela I Campbell. I run a Facebook community, a free Facebook community called the fit mompreneur. Okay. Or you can also just go to my website and everything is there too. So it's acfitmama.com. Um, I have so much that we do in our free community, but we do also have coaching programs um, that, you know, we have a few tiers, something to kind of meet everybody's budget. So thank you so very much. I hope this presentation found you, uh, you know, hopefully in your heart and help you understand, hey, you deserve this. You're worthy of your time. You're even worthy of investment. If it's buying some equipment that you can work out at home or whatever it is, you are worthy. You deserve it. You will, I guarantee, have so much more success in your business, your life, your family, your everything when you become a priority, your health becomes a priority. And you put you first. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Fit Mama Health Talk with me, Angela Campbell. I feel extremely blessed every day and grateful for your support as I can't tell you how much it truly drives me every day to continue bringing more value to you with health and fitness and mindset and also faith, inspiration, so you too can change your health as well as your family's health and life. I appreciate always listening. I also appreciate the shares. If you don't already follow me, you can also find me on Instagram at the underscore fit underscore mompreneur, or you can also search our free Facebook group, the fit mompreneur on Facebook. Join our group full of all women, all walks of life. 
share this episode and also tag me if you do so we together can help inspire and impact more women together as a whole.